Hello and welcome to News Hour from the BBC World Service. We're coming to you live from London. My name's Paul Henley. And on the programme today, Turkey's parliament passes a bill to allow the deployment of troops to Libya. More on that in a moment. Now, if the new decade wasn't already making you feel old, consider welcoming the latest generation to succeed X, Y, Z and the baby boomers. They are the alpha generation, a name coined by one particular sociologist. They're children born between 2010 and 2025, and they're the most tech-savvy, most creative generation ever, apparently. They'll use smartphones and tablets as if by nature and will be surrounded by artificial intelligence-powered robots voice assistants and augmented reality. But will the world of the alpha generation be that different from that of its predecessors? Dave Coplin is a futurist, also the founder and chief envisioning officer, his title, of the UK-based company Envisioners. For Generation O Alpha, if we are sitting there trying to replicate the Victorian education system, the Victorian office or the the hierarchy, the structures we have at work, we're going to be missing the opportunity of what technologies like artificial intelligence and data is going to offer. So we've kind of got a duty of care to be to get ready for the Generation Alpha in a world where we will have, you know, algorithms will be able to do amazing things that will lift humans to be able to achieve far more than they could do today but only if we give them the skills that really complement the technology rather than compete with the technology. Now, from what little I've read about Generation Alpha's future lives, they sound really quite similar to concepts that are familiar to everyone, that we'll be carrying around iPads or the equivalent, that people will be talking to the equivalent of Siri and Alexa and that they'll be getting all their information online. What's the difference? Let's say the Generation Alpha is about 20 years from entering the world of work. So cast your mind back 20 years from now. So in 2000, there was no iPhone. There wasn't really domestic broadband for most of the global population. And we worked in a very different way. We had to be in a physical location of work. The computers that we had were big. Even the laptops of the day were big, chunky things. 20 years later, we're now in a world where smartphones kind of are the de facto technology device that people use every day. 20 years from now, they may not be phones. We may not see them. I mean, let's get really science fiction for a minute. They might be chips embedded in our bodies. They might be in the windows that we put in our buildings. They might be in the tables that we have in our offices. And so this concept of carrying a device in 20 years may be as weird as, you know, the concept of us putting a camera in our telephone, you know, 20 years previously. And with these Generation Alpha babies and toddlers and children and teenagers... Is the age of withholding technology just over? Here's an iPhone, here's an iPad, play away. Oh, God, I hope so. And I know that that will be a bit controversial to some people. But if you ask most adults today about their relationship with their smartphone, most adults would say that they couldn't be as productive at work or they couldn't enjoy their relationships if they didn't have access to their phones. Now, for most kids, that's exactly what we force them to do every single day. When they go to school, I can only give you UK numbers, but 95% of the schools in the UK today restrict access to technology in classes. Most schools ban phones. But adults don't have to form their characters and learn through socially interactive play. That's the reason, isn't it? But you talk about that like they're two mutually exclusive things. And if you look at how kids use technology today, they are as active and as playful with technology as they are, you know, offline. And by sort of putting this blanket, old-fashioned sort of blinkered view on what the technology can do, we, we just risk not helping our kids develop the right kind of relationship. And, you know, if we as adults are asked a question to which we don't know the answer, we say, I don't know, but give me a couple of minutes. Let me have a quick look and I'll see what I can figure out. And we grab the nearest digital device, we look it up and we say, right, based on that information, I think this is the answer. Why are we not teaching our kids that? You know, never mind Generation Alpha, Generation Y, Generation Z, they could all do with these skills as well. That's Dave Coplin, whose job it is to predict the future. This is the BBC World Service.